Okay, video two for chapter six. Here's where we learn um, the percent proportion. So this goes with section 6.3. You can always look at these pages for more examples. In this one, we're going to, um, in this section, we're gonna use a proportion to solve all sorts of percent problems. So before we get too far into this chapter, it's probably important to think about what kind of questions we're gonna be asked. So here's an egg carton for an example. In this egg carton, you can tell that I've split it up into thirds, right? There's my dozen eggs. I've kind of shown you where thirds would be. And then I've also colored four of them that green color. So there's three basic types of questions we can ask when we talk about percent problems. And those three basic questions would be this, looking at our example here. What is one third, or I know a third is 33.3%. So what is 33% of the dozen? Right, I could ask, what is this one third of the dozen? And you'd say, oh, okay, that is four eggs. That's one kind of question. And in this question, I'm looking for the part. What part am I asking for? Or what part is it? It's four eggs. Four is what percent of 12? So I could be asking for the percent. I could say, well, four out of 12 looks like it's this one third or 33%. So I could ask a question where I'm looking for the percent. Or I could say four is 33% of what number? This four eggs is one third of the whole dozen, where I'm looking for the whole or the total. So the whole is 12. So all three of these questions, where we're asking for the part, the percent, and the whole, we'll be able to solve using this percent proportion. So I've put it up here. This is the percent proportion written out in words. It says that the part divided by the whole or total, I'll use both words back and forth, either one, is equal to the percent written as a whole number out of 100. So for example, if I wanted 90%, this would look like 90 over 100, okay? But a lot of times, instead of writing all those words out, I change it to symbols. And your book uses this. So write that down as the percent proportion written in symbols, where they use A to show the part and P to show the percent. So got to keep those straight. They both can't, they both start with P's, but I can't use a P for both of them. So we use A, okay? So it's a proportion. That means everything we learned in chapter five, um, all the ways we learned how to solve them in chapter five, like cross multiplying, cross multiplication, will work here as I'm solving them in chapter six. So let's do an example of each type. Remember, for any proportion, I need four numbers. It's a ratio or a fraction equal to another ratio or fraction. I'm gonna set it up like that. They are supposed to give me three numbers, and then there's one that I'm gonna solve for or one to find. So every time I have a problem, I'm gonna think, okay, what are the three numbers they're giving me? Where do they go? And then what's the one I'm looking for? This, pr this problem says, what number is 45% of 80? So let's look for some clues to figure out what I have. Big clue right here I gave you underlined of. The word of is usually telling you what the whole or the total is. So let's label that. That would be our W in our proportion. Clearly with the percent sign, this one is the percent or the P. And then it looks like they're asking for what number is that part. So if they're looking for the part, I'm gonna use A, that's what I'm looking for. So, so far, looks like I can put A in for what I need, 80 in for my whole or my total, and then 45 is the percent. And you say, hang on, there's a number missing. They only gave me two numbers. What else is supposed to go in there? Well, this is always gonna be 100. They don't really have to tell you that, it's just 100 is gonna go in that spot of the proportion. So let's cross multiply, 80 times 45, and then A times 100, solve for A, and I get that the part is 36. So to answer the question, 36 is 45% of 80. So that's an example for the part. Let's do one where I'm looking for the percent. Start with my proportion. So I should see this written on your paper every time. Every homework problem, every quiz question, start by writing this down. 
and then we'll read and fill in what we can. So again, of 20, that's telling me the total or the whole. Okay, what percent? Well, clearly they want the P, they want the percent, we don't know that. And uh, they're telling me is eight. What percent of 20 is eight? This would be the part or A. So now I'm ready to plug back into here and put the numbers where they go. So eight out of 20 is what percent? And again, 100 always goes there. So cross multiply. 80, or sorry, 8 times 100, and solve for P, 80, div or sorry, 800 divided by 20 is 40, so I got 40, but because this is a P percent, I got to put a percent sign on it, 40%, so 8 out of 20 would be 40%, so that's an example for percent, now we've got one for finding the whole. I'm going to write my proportion, so I've got it there. Okay, let's see what we know. 210%, that's obviously the P, of what number? Of is my clue, but I don't know the whole, that's what I'm trying to find, is 84. This must be the part. Sorry, for part, we used A, part. All right, now I'm ready to plug it in. So A, part, 84, of what number? I don't know is equal to 210% and always over 100. So can I have more than 100%? Sure, it's just gonna be a number bigger than 100. So cross multiply, uh, 210W, and then cross multiply, 8400. Solve for W, yes, you have to show all this work every time, I know it's a pain but it keeps us straight and organized and you're a whole lot less likely to make mistakes. And if you do make a mistake, it'll be easy to catch it. So 8,400 divided by 210, and I get that the whole or the total was 40. So let's see if that makes sense. 210% of what number is 84? If I start with 40 and I take 210% of that, yeah, it makes sense that I would double it plus a little bit more and end up with 84. So, trick here, careful. In this one, I ended up with a part that was bigger than the whole. That's fine, as long as I'm talking about more than 100%. So don't freak out and say, well, that's not possible. You can't get a part that's bigger than the whole. You can if it's just more than 100%. So that will be possible. Think it through. So there's six examples here. They're copied onto your paper. I want you to set them up with the proportion and then show me your work. So all the steps, all the work should be there. Don't come back with your video notes filled in and just an answer for each one. Pause it now. Try and set them up. This is your chance to practice and uh, make sure you understand it or if you have any questions when you come back tomorrow. Okay, so pause and then we'll come back and check all six. Okay, check these first two. Notice that I started with my proportion, then plugged everything in where it went, then showed the work for my cross multiplication until I got the variable by itself. That's how much work you need on your paper for all of these, just to make sure we've got everything in the right spot and we're good to go. So check these and then I'm going to scroll down so that we can check three, four, five, and six. Okay, so check number three. Get rid of that. Check number three, we got a whole of 150. Number four, the part would be 11. And then in five and six, um, You'll notice here that I get a percent of 104 because the part, again, here's the part, is actually bigger than the whole. So that means it has to be larger than 100%. It's 104%. And then in number six, again, I have a, a percent that's larger than 100%. So that means it should be a clue that my answer, when I get the whole, my part, again, is actually going to be bigger than the whole, more than 100%. So just a quick double check. Make sure anytime you solve for P that you put a percent sign on your answer or a label of any type if you need it for that answer, okay? All right, that was, that's basically 6.3, the percent proportion.